Hello again, in this video, we're going to learn the basic arithmetic operations which are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Then, we'll do a practical project to control a water tank inside factory I.O. software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's start this video. If you remember I've explained these instructions in the previous video. They can be founded on the left side, under the applied instructions list. As you know, these instructions can be used to compare stored numbers, or check the status of each bit on the PLC memory. Now, let's select another group. For arithmetic operations, which are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. As you see, for each one, there are several instructions. For example, these instructions related to multiplying. First, let's the difference between the first and second multiply instructions. Now, let's compile the program. There isn't any error or warning. Now, let me download the program. Pay attention, this warning message says I'm using an illegal instruction. Note that, Based on the selected PLC series at the beginning of your project, ISP Soft displays instructions which are valid. But maybe, some instructions are not supported by some version. My PLC doesn't support the used multiply instructions, and as you can see, the error LED has been turned on. So, let me continue this video with the Delta simulator. First, I must use COMMGR software to activate the simulator and then, change communication settings inside ISP Soft. Now, let's compile, and then, download the program to the virtual PLC. Well, let me activate the online mode, and then, run the virtual PLC. Now, let me change the first input. The stored number on the D0 address. Now, if I activate this bit, both instructions will calculate the correct answer. Now, let's change the first input again. As you see, only the second instruction has calculated the correct answer. Because the first one needs a positive signal edge, to do the multiply operation. So, I must reactive this bit again, to activate the first instruction. Now, both answers are correct. Note that, we can use these two instructions, when two inputs, and also the result can be represented by 16 bits from minus 32768 to 32767. Otherwise, these instructions maybe don't calculate the correct answer. Similarly, we can use these instructions, when we know inputs and the result can be stored by 32 bits. Well, 
these two instructions work based on 32 bits. So, if I select D0 for the first input, this instruction will use D0 and D1. So, the next free address is D2. Similarly, the next free address to save the final result is D4, not D3. Note that, PLC doesn't check this point, which an address is used for another purpose or not. For example, this program won't work correctly. Let me explain it. Based on the program, I want to multiply the stored number on D0 by 5, and also by the stored number on D2 and D3. Suppose D0 is equal to 1. So, D1 will be 5. Note that, this address is used beside D0, at the first input of the second multiply instruction. Because it works with 32 bits. Now, if we consider all stored bits on D0 and D1 as an integer number with 32 bits, we'll have another number 327681, that it's not equal to 1. Well, these multiply instructions have been told. As you see, here are some multiply instructions too. Let me explain their difference. Well, MUL and DMUL instructions work like MUL16 and MUL32. But they use more bits to store their result. MUL uses 32 bits, and DMUL uses 64 bits. So, this instruction uses D8, D9, D10, and D11 to store its result. Note that, all explained instructions work with integer numbers. To multiply two real numbers, there is another instruction, DMUL R. As you see, there are different multiply instructions. You can easily understand their differences. For example, the letter D indicates that the selected instruction needs double words, 32 bits. The letter P used for instructions that sensitive to positive signal edges. Or the letter R refers to real numbers. You can learn other arithmetic instructions similarly. Now, let's do a practical project using factory I.O to control a water tank with move, comparison, and arithmetic instructions. Let's go to factory I.O. software, and insert a water tank. Well, this tank has two modes. I select the analog mode under its configuration menu. Now, let me design a control box. Now, let me add a potentiometer. Similarly, I can change its voltage range, under its configuration menu. Now, I add two digital displays, to display the water level, and the desired level. I select the integer format for them. Finally, let me add a selector. Note that, I can determine a suitable tag or name, for each inserted equipment. Now, let's test the final project, then I will explain my program briefly. Note that, this water tank has two inlet and outlet valves, to fill and discharge it. These two valves are controlled by a voltage between 0 to 10 volts.
Also, the tank has a level meter. It produces a voltage between 0 and 10 volts, when the water level is changed between 0 and 3 meters. Note that, in real conditions, equipment must be connected to real inputs outputs of my PLC. But for this simulation, like previous videos, I used memory addresses to connect them to my PLC, via the OPC server. Well, when I press the first push button, based on my program, PLC sends 10 volts to the inlet valve to open the fill valve. Also, if I release the first push button, PLC sends 0 volt to close the inlet valve. Similarly, the discharge valve can be opened or closed by the second push button. As you see, here are two digital displays. My PLC gets the level meter signal, then converts it to a number between 0 and 300, and then sends it to the first digital display. So, this number shows me the current level. Now it's 50 centimeters. The second one works similarly. It displays the desired level. I can use this potentiometer, to send a voltage between 0 and 10 to my PLC, then my program converts it to a number between 0 and 300. My PLC will use this number, when I select the auto mode with this selector. Now, the desired level is 64, which is greater than the current level. So, my PLC will turn on the inlet valve automatically. Again, let's change the desired level. Now, the desired level is greater than the current level, so PLC has turned on the inlet valve automatically. Well, the inlet valve remains open, until the current level reaches the desired level. Let's back to manual mode, and press the second push buttons to discharge the tank. Now, if I select the auto mode, PLC will open the inlet valve to reaches the desired level. Well, like previous videos, I've connected equipment to these tags, which were defined inside the OPC server. On another side, my PLC is connected to these tags. Therefore, my PLC can control equipment inside factory IO software. Note that, there are different types of data, which are transferring via OPC server. At the bottom, according to these colors, we can understand which data type is used for equipment. Now, let me explain my program briefly. Well, the first condition to activate these move instructions, is to select manual mode. The first network opens and closes the fill valve, based on the first push button state. If I press it, this contact will detect its positive signal edge, and then, number 10 will be moved to this memory, which is connected to the fill valve via the OPC server. If I release the first push button, this contact will detect the falling signal edge, and then, PLC will move number 0 to close the fill valve. 
The second network uses the same logic to open and close the discharge valve, when the manual mode is selected. Note that, the used data type for valves inside factory I.O., is real numbers, which use 32 bits. So, I used this move instruction, DMOVR. Note that, if I enter a number without any fraction part, PLC will consider it as an integer number, but this instruction work with real numbers. So, to solve this problem, the entered number must have a fraction part. Well, the fraction part of an integer number like 10, is 0. Ok, the next network calculates the current level. Note that, I've explained different multiplication instructions for integer numbers. For a real number, we must use this instruction. It works similarly. So, the third network multiplies the received number from the level meter by 30, to convert it between 0 to 300. It's still a real number. The next instruction converts it, to an integer number that can be displayed by the first digital display. The next network works similarly, to determine the desired level, and display it on the second digital display. In this network, the signal comes from the potentiometer, which is a real number between 0 and 10. Let's continue. Here, I've added a dead band to the desired level, using add and subtract instructions. Note that, these values will be used instead of the desired level, when the automatic mode is selected. Let's see next networks. Well, if I select the auto mode, PLC will execute these instructions. The first network, compare the current level with the high level. It's only 10 centimeters more than the desired level. Therefore, if the automatic mode is selected and this condition is also correct, the inlet valve will be closed automatically. Similarly, if the current level is 10 centimeters less than the desired level, the next network will open the fill valve. Well, this was the program related to the water tank system, which has been tested before. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.